Andrew and Penny Knight didn't always overlook this celebrated surf spot and the surrounding majestic granite rock formations. They originally owned the house behind, but wanting to see the beach, they convinced the owners of this property who lived in Australia to sell. They then set about creating their very own wonder home. Oh, look at that. Now that is what you call a view. It is. It's almost like you're sitting right on top of the beach. And I would imagine that's exactly what you had in mind. It was. We wanted to be able to see the waves, to see the beach, to be able to experience Lindudno without actually living down on the sand. But this wasn't what the house looked like when you first bought it. It was a small, rather ugly 70s style base brick house. There were a lot of tiny little rooms that didn't make any sense and it was nothing like the open spaces that there are now. In fact, that bay window didn't even exist in the original house. That was probably one of the most significant changes that we made. Penny's husband, Andrew, hatched many of the design elements himself. The French oak floors they put in lead to the kitchen, which they opened up extensively to the rest of the house. The one lovely thing about this kitchen is that you're completely a part of the home while you're in it. If you're entertaining, it's very close to the dining room, it's also part of the living room. You've got this amazing view. It's a replica of a kitchen that we had in our house when we lived in America. Um, we were transferred there for a while for my husband's job. And while we were there, we not only picked up on a whole lot of design ideas that we sent back to Peter, our architect, for him to incorporate in the home. You'll notice there are a lot of these Mackenzie child decor elements throughout the house. Peter Mamakos was the man with the architectural plan. Well, Peter, as I understand it, you were being sent all these ideas from the States and you had to incorporate them into the home. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's not unusual, but it's great to have people who know what they want. It makes interpreting their brief much easier. And what was the brief? So the brief was to create a family home that flowed well. We, the original house was lots of small spaces that weren't well linked and we dealt with that uh, as well as the level changes by opening it out a lot and raising the ceiling so we get one a feeling of one space but definitely defined between kitchen, dining, living all linked together and flowing to the outside. They wanted the house to appear as if it has grown out of the rock that it sits on and so came the decision to use the natural stone of the area for the exterior walls. Peter, one of the features that really stand out for me about this house are these granite walls. The interesting thing about it is that Penny uh, sourced the granite from an excavation just down the road, so it saved a lot in terms of them not having to transport the granite for miles and uh, she got a really good price. The timber and the walls go so well together, was that Penny's idea? So that came from her living in the States and uh, there's a lot of timber building there. So she loved that look and there are a couple of photographs she sent through and we, the original sketches I worked on doing timber top and the granite at the bottom. And I think the overall effect has been great. Well, the site is on a mountain facing the Atlantic Ocean. Wind has got to be a problem was one of the main issues in the brief and that was because of the exposure of the site it really stands up on top of this rock and uh, so if you around the other side of the house you see exactly where we've uh, created wind shelter outside areas by backing into the wind as much as possible and having roofed verandas which cuts the wind to a large extent. This climate of rock, wind and sandy ground can also be unforgiving to plants. And as Penny's husband is known to say, beauty is as beauty does. The garden had to work practically, and landscaper Helen Manson Cullen made it happen. You built this lovely garden on a mountain, on a rock. That couldn't have been easy. No, there were some challenges, definitely. The slope at the back, the thin soil at the front. There was a lot to deal with. There were some difficult issues with the big rocks, bringing them in and actually finding them, and finding the little rocks on the side of the road. They were blasting just up the road, so luckily we could go up there and say, listen guys, we need a few more rocks, bring a few more down, and in they went. All the effort was worthwhile, and the finished product resembles a scene from a mountain stream with a giant's causeway running through it. We really loved having the big round stairs. We wanted this big sort of Great Gatsby thing going on, not just normal old plonky stairs going down. And what it's done, it's created a lovely movement through the garden and all the way to the front door and at the kitchen door as well. What was Penny's brief? Vague at best. What we wanted to do was create separate garden rooms for the family to be able to enjoy the garden at the same time without getting in one another's hair all the time. So we ended up with completely different spaces at the back, on the side, and in the front of the garden. 
Well established now, the garden is much like the vegetation which runs up table mountains, lush, protected gorges and ravines. So it's not a big flowery garden, it's very much a lush sort of, you want it to feel like a glen, you want it to feel as if it's a forest clearing rather than a, a plot that was cleared to build a house. But you'll see with the whole garden side of things, everything's quite curvy and a little bit on the sexy side, I like to think. And on the other side, it's all very straight lines. And Peter, the architect, arrived one day and he saw all these curved lines going in and he wasn't too wild about the whole idea. So he stood in the middle of the driveway and he said, this side's mine and that side's yours. But it's all worked out quite nicely in the end and the garden's growing beautifully and the family are enjoying it. So I think we have a result. While architect Peter focused on keeping the sloping plot to its eight meter height limit, with several interesting level changes, Penny and Andrew set about the interiors. I've noticed quite a few pictures and ornaments of horses around. Is there a passion? There is a passion. I love horses and I ride every day. And a few years ago, Andrew mentioned that there weren't any horse items within the house, which he found quite odd. So I started collecting and I collected and collected and he started getting a little twitchy. And the final straw was, let me just show you. <laughs> okay, this way. Horses are Penny's job too and the equestrian-themed wallpaper running the height of the stairs is in keeping with the work she does from home for the organization Dressage South Africa. Oh, that's lovely. Who's the artist? Shirley's our artist. This is all of her pottery, and Peter actually designed that cutout especially as a showpiece for Shirley's art. So this is the upstairs living area? It is, whereas downstairs is the kind of big screen rugby rumpus watching room. This is more the sort of cosy family Sunday night movie. Married for 16 years, the couple have a 14-year-old daughter, Shirley, and a 15-year-old son, Finley. So this is my son Finley's room, and as you can see, we've got graffiti here. Finley was adamant that he wanted graffiti, so we found one of the uh, local graffiti artists, Mac One, and he came in and this is what he created for us. I love it. My daughter Shirley's room is a little bit more girly. She loves to put pictures all over the wall, as girls do. And so we found a wallpaper that enables her to do that, and it's a work in progress. The main bedroom occupies the quietest spot in the house, far away from the southeaster. Wow, OK, I can see why this is one of your favorite spaces. That is very special. What did you go for in terms of decor in this room? I wanted it to be peaceful, but also be a space where you felt comfortable to spending a lot of time in it. So you can see there's sort of muted browns and, and tans, a little bit of blue that picks up the sea. And I absolutely love the heavy lion lampshades that I've got down there. I found them in a shop in America and they had to come home with me. The tranquil bathroom is a continuation of the house's clean lines with white marble and neutral tones throughout. One of the things my husband loves most about this is that he can wake up in the morning and see what the waves are doing in Landudno, to the extent that we've almost become the local Landudno surf line. I tell you, Nick, there is nothing that beats waking up here in the morning. It's absolutely spectacular and I love it. Understandably, the bay window is a favorite for the lady of the house and few would want to move from here. That is incredible. Penny, thank you so much for showing me your lovely house. I think this is the perfect place to end the journey. Cheers, Nico. Thank you. Penny's philosophy is balance in everything, and she needs it in a house perched on a rock. 